Welcome to the 10 Acre Woods and our wool processing class. For any other wool processing classes that we've, videos that we've done, they'll be in the comments below. And we are going to start from the beginning. They are cat approved, just so <laughs> we understand how cat, much cats love the wool. Um, so this is uh, Willows from out in the farmyard. Uh, her fleece and we are going to lay it flat and then you're going to check the edges it's called skirting you're going to check the edges for um, large clumps this here is called the guard hair which sometimes it's really rough so we'll take some of that off sometimes but it, for us here it's normally the chunks of see this here this is all well around and it's very hard to clean so we'll just pull this out and it's called skirting so you'll skirt it all the way around I just threw up a chunk right there. Up a chunk and then from here after it's skirted sometimes we'll pull out the big chunks of grass this is the obviously the neck area here or here where's the two chunks <laughs> oh tiana see this this is a a back end or around the uh the belly where there's lots of lanolin it gets quite it collects the dirt down there and the joints this is very greasy with lanolin which is why nick samu likes it so much she looks high yes she's uh quite enjoying it can you get off she will often climb into the, the containers. Um, so I think we're going to split this in two. <laughs> Around next. <laughs> and then it'll go into one of the buckets. I can hear all the grains. Okay, there's one. Okay, Nick. <laughs> Come here. I'm not sure if all of this will fit in one, but. You're like dead weight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your wool's gone. And it goes into the bucket. <laughs> the best soap that we've found to use so far is Dawn, or I use an all natural, the Thieves. Um, so. A little bit of soap in each one. <laughs> the other ones I have in here already are Onyx, our black sheep right here. And then these two are Java, the alpaca. Okay. Then we will take a bucket, get really, really, really hot water. And this is a great way to this is an at home. Um, if you have one day, I hope for a big cauldron and uh, we may be able to boil the water outside, which would be hotter. For the sheep wool, uh, the hot water breaks down or melts the lanolin and then releases the dirt. So, uh, Sheep wool doesn't retain odor or uh, dirt. It's the lanolin that is holding everything together. So when you melt the lanolin, the dirt's released. So of course, the hotter the water, the better. Uh, we will fill each of these buckets and then let sit half an hour doing very gently just kind of moving it around so that the dirt can then fall to the bottom it sure shrinks uh, wool doesn't hold water but it uh it does uh get soppy so this is onyxes that we're doing now but just notice that if you look, this is the same fleece that we did. Just by adding the hot water, you can see how it's now white 
and the lanolin has released. So this is what I mean by we'll just kind of whew, warm, go and give it a little bit of a mix. And this is one I haven't added water to, but that's like yellow and white. Um, the lanolin, if you wanted to collect the lanolin, what you would do is add like a higher water and you'll uh, in half an hour you'll see the lanolin kind of gathering on the top and then you can skim it off the top there's not like we did it one year and i think we got a tablespoon of lanolin off of a big fleece so it wasn't worth it to do it in this setup you can see how just by adding the water how dirty i don't know if you can see along the edge there See how dirty the water is? Just by, oh, it's warm. <laughs> now alpacas don't have lanolin. Um, they're just a hair. So it's not a matter of releasing, it's a matter of washing the, uh, giving you the water and stuff to get the dirt and sediment out of because there's, there's nothing holding the dirt to the alpaca. It's like our hair. 30 minutes have passed and so now we are going to uh, take this out and give it a second rinse. So we ended up, just, we needed an extra bucket so we just combined it and now we are going to put it in the strainer. Without trying to get it everywhere. Bring it out best you can. <laughs> Normally I would have another bucket right here, but we're using the sink. We did at uh, one year put this on a bench. I suggest it because this is hard on your back. So if you look in here, you can actually see the, uh, all the white on the top is actually the lanolin. I'm sure you can see it on here. I just noticed it on that one. Onyx has a lot of lanolin. And your hands will be very, very soft. Somebody in the comments had also asked how much um, wool you'll get from a fleece. And that is a really hard question to answer because it all depends on your sheep, its hair growth, its breed. Um, health issues, environment. So our big producers are Turbo and Tank. They get a five to six inch fleece every year. They're older, so they're gotta be six years old now. And uh, chunky monkeys, <laughs> they're well fed. Um, so they produce a really good uh, fleece. <clears throat> Onyx, the one we're doing right here, she is um, two now. So then you get to the end, you got all, all the little tidbits. Don't splash. See how dirty that water is? You don't want to waste any. All the smaller stuff can be used for felting. Okay, then we're gonna put, we'll give it a rinse. You do not want to put your dirty water from the sheep because it's got lanolin in it. You do not want to put that down your sink in your house because 
it is very sticky and can stick to your drains and cause some issues down the road. So after that process, it'll go back in the bucket. We'll add more soap and more hot water. Um, so that'll be, we'll add more hot water. It'll go through another half hour sit and the water, you want to rinse it as many times until your water is more clear. Not clean, clear, but clear, er. Um, it, until you do the picking and all that, you'll still be pulling off um, coloring from the grasses and the grains and whatnot that you have in there. But as long as it's running a nice clean, not perfectly clear, but nice clean water, then, because we get asked how many times should you rinse or how many times do I rinse? If it's a really dirty fleece, rinse it as many times until it's kind of clear. So then what we do here is, so then I'll go ahead and I'll do the others. Um, we dump it outside and I'll dump it. Uh, if there's any wool or anything left in the bucket, uh, the birds will come along and use it for nests and whatnot. So out the door and over the deck. That's my sheep process. <laughs> and in the spring, because it'll be winter, in the spring, you'll see all the white lanolin down there. <laughs> so when you're done and you've done your second wash and it's nice, you got, got it to a uh, clarity in the water that you like, then you'll wring it out. I usually rinse it under hot water and then I'll pull it to the counter on a towel. Sorry, it'll be on a towel. And that'll absorb some of the water over here so, but you want to separate the big clumps over here and take out a little bit more grass at every step. You're going to be plucking little things out of the, the wall. And then it'll go over onto the screens where it'll dry. So ours is dry over there right now and that'll be swapped out. And then this is the alpaca that'll be next. And we just use the house screens and stools. So you know, you're not buying big drying racks and whatever. And then it'll just be spread on here. Have the fan going. Make sure your dehumidifier is going on in your house. And then it'll take two, two I, I usually give it two days. Um, then it'll be dry enough for you to go and do finish the, pro the process. Once it's dry, then it will go over to the carding machine. We'll, what we do is we often will have extra pickers at this stage and all your little debris grass, whatnot, will fall out. Every step takes a little bit more of that out of it. So the buck from washing to picking on the counter and then picking at this stage, dry, it'll all end up doing, releasing more and more of that debris. So you don't have to worry about getting all the debris out because every process uh, will help along with that. Your larger chunks um, will, and the oats, will all come out. So this will be how you pick it if you don't have any machines, okay? If you have, and as you're doing it, you will gather different machines. This is a picking machine. So this one, you, Feed. Got to remember what. Oh yeah, see the arrows <laughs> on in pencil. <laughs> so this I ordered online here, and this is a different type of picker. I find the hand picking much more relaxing than using the machines, and I find that it does the same thing. And all it's doing is separating the uh, fibers so that it can release. As I said, I much prefer hand picking. I just find it's relaxing, it's quiet. And 
then it comes out this end picked, which is basically what we did there. Okay, then you'll take your picking over to the carter. So there's different ways of picking, there's different ways of carding as you get more into it. These are carding paddles. I believe you can get them online for about $20 each. Uh, I prefer the nice wood ones. So you want to load your uh, paddle. It's called loading, where you just kind of, until it stops grabbing, you're just holding the fibers so that they grab. And then you take your other paddle and you comb it onto that paddle. Roll it. that one I find these hard on your pec muscles and your inner arms it takes technique to get used to on how to do it this will then go into this is called uh, roving so then those are your little roving that you would then take to the spinning machine okay so that is one way of carding on the carding paddles. This is how I prefer to do it, is on the drum carter. And so you're loading it, and then that. And again, this will take out more of the, the fibers and the dirt and debris. I just find it more relaxing easier on the pegs. They do have motorized ones of this as well. Uh, again, you're taking power and it's kind of nice to be able to do it on these old machines. These are still, you can still purchase these. I think you're looking at about 250 for these. But check with your local artisans, your local hobbyists, your grandmas. You know, you never know who's got something in their garage. I was talking to a lady just this week how she's had one because she got it, or it was actually the spinning wheel that she had gotten as home decor and uh, she would love to learn how to actually use it. It's neat to see how it comes together. So all the little tiny ones here, you can take these off, use them for fleece balls or dryer balls, uh, felting, whatnot. These ones on here will be good to go to the spinning, which will be the next section. So I'm getting a little full right now because I'm seeing a lot of extra so all these little fluffies. They're just shorter hairs. Coming out of the process. So then these will go in and those will make the dryer balls, which we'll show you later. After this is full, once it stops grabbing more, uh, give me a needle, Tiana, please. Once it stops grabbing, then there is a break in right here. There's a break in here. So you take your needle, raise it up. This is also, you can do a lot more on this than you can on the carding paddles. And then you just pull it apart like that. And then it can be removed off. And this is called a bat. The batting you can use as a batting um, for quilting. There's Coda. My kitty. So as it comes off of this one, then it will go over to Tiana, the spinning wheel. I'm not sure here, let me show you this. Just If I, now this was the first time we used it today. So 
you can see how much more debris comes out at each stage. And then I'll just, I'll vacuum that out every once in a while, but it can hold quite a bit under there. I just wanted to show you what uh, comes out of it. I'm gonna put another one on here because I wanna show you how to do the roving part of it. Watch your tush there, Cody. Your long hair is gonna get carded. If you have fibers that aren't totally lining up either, you can totally take the one you just carded and run it through again. So it's all on preference on how you want to do it. Ooh, that was a lot. This off. I noticed I grabbed the stuff I took off the last one, so there was a lot. This one, you can cut it, like when it goes to Tiana, she'll break it, which she can show you. But you can also take it off. In the size that you would like. So if I wanted this size, then I could take it off in roving like this. And then when you get to where you already took it off, sorry, lots of extra fluffies there. You would just move over and continue to take so that you're actually taking it off in one really long piece. So there's a few different ways that, you know, as you do it, you'll, you'll learn what you like to do. I like the bats. Tiana, I think, likes the bats better. Plus, time-wise, the bats don't seem to take as long. So then you end up with one that long instead of a bat you'd end up with a roving. Then it goes over to Tiana. <laughs> and I'm out. <laughs> so this is the spinning wheel that I normally uh, do most of my spinning on. I have tried a few of the other ones, but this is the nicest one that we have. Um, it's also one of the easiest to use. Um, so in here, this is where your string or your yarn goes. Normally when you first start spinning, you'll have a leader yarn. And what that is, is it's either um, another wool that you spun before, or it's um, a yarn that's really fuzzy that kind of hooks onto the fibers so that you can spin onto it. And so that would just be one that's tied onto here, and then that's what you would spin onto. Um, Mom, can yeah. you give me my needle back, please? I sure can. <laughs> I kind of need that. <laughs> I just went to grab it. My bad. Thank you. Um, so this is just a little crochet needle that I use. Um, so it's just got a little hook on the end. And so what I do with this is when you're putting your leader yarn on, you'd hook it through this hole right here and you'd hook it through. Here, I'm just gonna give myself some more. Hook it through and you pull it through here, which this stuff isn't fully spun that I just put through. So you pull it through here And then you'd pull it again back through this way, this hole right here. 
And what that does is that adds the twist that you need um, to get actual spun yarn. And then if it happens and you were using the spun stuff and it gets a little untwisted, then I just unspin it a little more. Oop. Use my other hand, there we go. And then just kind of untwist it and then kind of hook it where you want it. Uh, so then with this, when you have your spun stuff, when you're spinning, you want to have your one point. Normally I go usually about this distance away from this, the, the end of the little hole. Uh, I'm not sure what this is actually called. Um, and so you want that distance so you can see how big it is that's being spun onto here. Because this starts moving and you won't be able to see how big that is. And so when you start spinning, you always want to have a tight pinch here. And that's not allowing the spin into here because if you have your bigger, um, your bat or all this, it'll start spinning through the entire thing. And then you won't be able to kind of get the right size that you want and pull it apart. So then when you start spinning, you have your one hand on here and that's kind of pushing it forward. And then you're just keeping that pinch. And then if you have your next piece that you want to use, you just add it to that pinch that you have. And then normally, so I can get a handle on it, I kind of extend this a little bit. And then you just slowly release it onto it. Oop. And then if you get a little too close, you can bring yourself back a little. And then you just keep going. And so my left hand is always keeping that pinch and just allowing that same amount to go through. And then my right hand is just kind of measuring out and kind of pulling back the actual roving to get the same size. What you can do also is before you actually start spinning, you can have it on and then you actually make this the size that you want it and you would go through. Uh, now this whole thing right here is a lot of smaller fibers, so that would fall apart a lot easier. But yeah, and I know um, a lot of people that I've heard from or seen videos of, they always say if you're first learning how to spin, it's really good to listen to music with a good beat. Um, because it is a beat that you do have to get used to. And normally when I, when I tell people to first try learning, um, learn your fastest speed on your spinning wheel and learn your slowest speed. Um, especially when you first start going, you're gonna want your slowest speed, which is kind of keeping up with this because when this is less full, it goes faster. So the more that's on here, the slower it'll go. So it gets easier as you go along. And normally I'll just watch movies while I do this. <laughs> Once you kind of get used to it, it gets a lot easier. And then once you're kind of you've done that for a little bit and it fills up on one spot, you unhook it here and you hook it back on in a different spot. Tiana's gotten so good that she can actually do, this is her favorite. This is a lace weight, so it's like thread. She can, you can see there's alpaca on the outside and sheep on the inside. The alpaca is white, the sheep is more of a cream. So these are the different, we call them artistic, uh, Yarn. Art, art yarn art yarn because it's got different so as she learned you know there's different but she's getting different sizes in the yarn which really turns out into some nice knitwear the uh if you have the thinner stuff you can turn it into two or three ply which will even it out but we kind of kept a variety because she's gotten uh better through the years this one was amazing the the th the the, I, I like what am I supposed to do this thread but it looks amazing she's gotten really good at spinning that's another alpaca the sheep um, when I do the head warmers that's actually turbo the first year we got them you can see the little orange paint that's turbo the first year we got them so from the spinning wheel it'll end up on a bobbin once the bobbin is full over uh, where Tiana was spinning then we will put them on a skein winder and there's different types of skein winders. We like this one because we can hold multiple uh, yarns on it 
and then combine off of this into a two ply or a three ply. Um, this being the one ply, this being the two ply, uh, we got sheep, alpaca, alpaca, and then a single ply. When you get it from um, a processing plant or processing garage, as I've learned, discovered, uh, you will end up getting what is called a skein of yarn. And the skein is what's come off of this or this other skein winder over here. This is a more common one for people to have at home. And the skein, what it's used for is when you dry the wool and then you set it up on the skein, you can actually tighten it to stretch out the wool so that it dries, okay, uh, without the twist. Once it's on the skein, you can either knit from that, if you have a skein winder to put it on, or then it will go into the ball winder. The ball winder is set up here. If you don't have a ball winder, what I did before I got this was I would start a ball and I would start to wind it. You got a hair? No, it's a spider. A, a spider. Okay, so then you'll end up, so I did this in the beginning and I just rolled myself a ball. Once you have the ball winder, string yarn goes through there and over here and then you have this nice little ball winder. Tiana's gonna usually I like usually you, like you, you just got stuck on a piece of wood. Okay, I usually oh, like to be further from the wrong side. That's why. I usually like to be further away. Yeah, yeah. Teamwork. Beautiful thing. You want me to slow it down? No. Nope. You can go. I can only go as fast as Tiana can. Well you gotta make sure you're not getting any little loops. And this was a, a thick, what thick, I gotta learn what the wool, different types of wool are. I like a thick, plumpy Ooh. wool. And then this, so all of these are 100 gram. This one is a 90, uh, 90 meter, 100 gram ball. And that is how it goes from sheep to product there and that comes off there very nicely Boop. and yeah, that is. is a 25 dollar 100 percent wool yarn ball yeah. then you can knit actually this this is this stuff here because we discovered it was a lot of little stuff left over this is what we will use for felting. So you have your felting uh, needles, and this is the most common uh, felting needle here. We'll give you a little bonus, guys. We don't usually throw this in the end. but uh, So there's your felting needle, and it's like a barbed uh, hook. And that's what pokes the uh, fibers into each other. Uh, in order to make uh, dryer balls, we'll give this as a bonus footage. Dryer balls is taking a bunch of this. Make a nice size ball. Take an old pair of nylons. Roll up your nylons. So all the little fibers that came off over there really can't, like they're hard to spin, they're hard to put through the process and whatnot. Instead of wasting them, what you do is you put them in a ball in your nylons, tighten the knot, and then you run that through your washer and dryer a few times and you will end up with A nice dryer ball that you can put leave in your I usually do sets of three uh, ten dollars a piece and they go in your dryer you can put your essential oils on it 
and it just keeps the clothes separated, which promotes drying faster, uh, less static, all that good stuff. Yeah, and then if you wanted to felt that, you would take, let's see, you take different colored wool. So you take a black little circle of wool and you can hear it grabbing. And this just pokes the fibers in. Oh, look, there's a little tail. Um, I don't make those ones. That's somebody that sat there for a long time. <laughs> long time. I could do a hair. Okay. I think we did a bunch with sheep. So you just take your different colored wool. Hold it on there. And what it does is it's just moving the fibers down into the other fibers. And then once you do this and do your decoration and stuff on it, throw it back in the nylon and throw it back in the dryer and that'll make it really smooth. So that's it from the 10 acre woods wool processing. If you have any questions or I missed anything, absolutely message me in the comments. I love responding to your comments, the addict, the what people that are addicted to yarn. Uh, I know you know who you are. <laughs> I'm not the only one out there. We have many more videos on wool processing, the shearing of the sheep. Feel, please check them out, like, share, and comment. It's how we get bigger and more out there in front of you guys. That's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Oh my. I screwed it to the table backwards. <laughs> this is how I prefer to do it on the carding. Uh... Drum carter. Drum carter. Okay. This is how I prefer. Yeah. This is how I prefer to do it. It's, uh, I lost it. It's how we get bigger and more out there in front of you guys. I forgot the rest. That's it. Have fun. <laughs> is that it? Thanks for watching. Okay. That's it. See you in the next video. Okay. So try that again. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.